Shorter cranks are the newest trend for performance-oriented cyclists, and just like with most trends in cycling, this one is getting a lot of buzz because the pros are starting to do it. The most notable of which is none other than Tade Pagacha, who switched to relatively short 165mm cranks this year, and then went on to win the Giro, the Tour, and the World Championships, just to name a few, and he is not the only World Tour pro to have done so. At nowhere near the level of Pagacha, but perhaps still worth mentioning, I also made the switch from the typical 172.5mm cranks you see on most medium-sized bikes down to 165mm cranks this year and went on to have my best season on the bike ever, placing in the top 10 in the Unbound 200 and improving on my lifetime Grand Prix standings. So, case closed, right? Some fast pros started using a thing and went faster while using it, so... It's probably faster, right? Are we just going to brush past the fact that this guy just lumped himself into a category of fast pros along with Tade Pagacha? If you know anything about this channel, then you know that a pro rider doing something is not a good enough justification for anything. So today we're going to be taking a look at what the research has to say about shorter cranks and how they affect performance and power output specifically to see if this is a bandwagon worth jumping on or if it's just a trend that will die out in the next five years. Welcome back to the channel. This video is fueled by the feed. Yes, Science Based Dylan is back. After a long season of racing, it's good to finally be nerding out over some research again, and I think a lot of you missed it as well. I was actually hoping you'd never make me suffer through one of these again, but it's just me. This video will be focusing on performance and specifically power output differences between different crank lengths, but I do want to start out by saying that there are some solid bike fit related reasons to go with shorter cranks. Instead of directly affecting performance, these more peripherally affect performance. For example, a shorter crank will reduce a rider's hip angle because the knee and therefore the upper leg isn't coming up as high at the top of the stroke. This could, in theory, allow a rider to get in a lower, more aero position and in turn go faster. For this reason, time trial specialists have been fans of shorter cranks for quite some time now. It may also help with knee pain simply because pedaling with a shorter crank means that your knee is going through a smaller range of motion. Quite simply, you don't have to bend your knee as much when you have a shorter crank. This is actually what led me to switch to shorter cranks this year. In the past, I have dealt with knee pain when my volume gets extremely high. We're talking about 25 to 30 hour weeks. Given this, I switched all my bikes to 165s and it seems to have resolved the issue. I had some absolutely massive training blocks this year, sometimes riding as much as 40 hours in a week, and I did not feel significant knee pain at any point. Of course, now that I just said this on camera, my knees will probably give me all sorts of issues this winter, but I digress. This is of course just an N of 1 anecdote, and I did look for research on crank length and knee pain, but to my knowledge it just hasn't been done yet. That being said, the reasoning behind it does make sense, and if you are currently suffering from knee pain, switching to shorter cranks is a pretty typical recommendation from bike fitters and is probably worth a try. On top of this, when bike fitters run into issues fitting clients, sometimes they will opt for shorter cranks because those shorter cranks can relieve those issues, and it can, in certain circumstances, be easier to fit a person around shorter cranks. These are all valid reasons for switching to shorter cranks, but inevitably the next question that will always get brought up is, well, how will that affect my performance? Sure, theoretically I may be able to get more aero with 165mm cranks, but what if I can't put out as much power? Yeah, maybe my 175 cranks are giving me crippling knee pain, but if they allow me to finally get that KOM, then I'll be able to sleep at night. I'm just throwing out hypotheticals here. Essentially, the concern boils down to, won't switching to shorter cranks reduce the amount of torque I'm able to produce and therefore reduce my power? Or perhaps switching to shorter cranks will increase my cadence and that will increase my power. Or perhaps it will have no effect whatsoever and I can just choose the crank that's best for my fit and not worry about it. These are important questions to be answered, especially since swapping crank lengths is not an inexpensive adjustment, especially if you have multiple bikes. So let's get into it. What kind of effect does switching your crank length have on your power output? Well, this study on the effect of crank length on power output put this question to the test by having subjects do max 30 second sprints on 125, 150, 175, 200, and 225 millimeter cranks. 
I know that's a huge range and nobody is on 125s or 225s, but it's important to go to the extremes so we can get a better idea of what the ideal crank length is. When you plot the mean power outputs for each length, you can see that there is a drop in power at the extremes. However, the optimal crank length actually appears to be closer to the shorter side. In fact, it appears that when taking into account both peak and mean power output, a 165mm crank was closest to optimal. It is important to keep in mind though that the difference in power output were pretty small. In fact, a massive, by industry standards, 50 millimeter difference in crank length only produced a power drop off on the order of 1%. Still though, this is evidence that a shorter crank, perhaps in the 165 millimeter range, may not only not negatively impact performance, but may actually improve it. That being said, I think we all intuitively know that your optimal crank length depends on your height or more specifically your leg length. There's no way that a six and a half foot tall person should be on the same length cranks as a five foot tall person. Fortunately, we do have research that better takes this into account. For example, this study on optimal crank length for sprinting tested six second sprint performance, but it took into account leg length by having subjects use lengths that were a percentage of their leg length. The percentages they used were 18, 20, and 22%. They found that the 18 to 20% cranks were superior, offering a 4% improvement in power output, and this is not the only study to come to this conclusion. All right, 20% is not how we typically think of crank length. What is that, short, long? I have no idea. Well, obviously it depends on the length of your legs, but a pretty typical inseam or crotch height, as this study puts it, yes, that's the words they actually used, is 32 inches or 81 centimeters. And it just so happens that 20% of that is, drum roll please, 162 millimeters. Okay, so maybe the bike industry has been wrong about crank length. Maybe shorter really is better. Dude, that's what I've been trying to tell my girlfriend. Instead of stocking average size bikes with 175 or 172.5 millimeter cranks, maybe we should have been stocking them with 165s all along. Well, let's cool our jets for a minute here. Every study that I've referenced so far is looking at sprinting performance. And while that is important, don't get me wrong, it's not the thing that most cyclists care the most about. For most cyclists, there's only one number that matters. Yes, I'm talking about FTP. In all seriousness though, we wanna know what kind of effect short cranks have on more sustained efforts. Being able to improve your sprint a little bit is great, but if you can't even make it to the finish line with the group because you failed to produce the power in critical moments throughout the race, then it doesn't really matter. Well, as it turns out, research done on longer or submaximal efforts seems to show little to no difference in performance markers with changes in crank length. For example, this study found that even though the pedaling biomechanics were different between the different sizes, this did not have an effect on heart rate or gross efficiency. Essentially what this means is that the body was not working any easier or harder to produce power with the shorter cranks. Similar results have been found when looking at VO2 max and ventilatory threshold as well. Interestingly enough though, your level of cycling experience may be a factor to consider. This study had novice cyclists ride for 30 minutes at 60% of their VO2 max with 175 millimeter cranks and then comically short 145 millimeter cranks. The surprising finding from the study was that those tiny cranks actually produced higher power outputs and improved economy in these less experienced riders. It is important to recognize that research in this area is pretty limited, and even though this study that I just referenced explicitly stated that these were novice riders, that's actually the norm here. It's simply harder to source highly trained cyclists for these studies, meaning that the participants often have little cycling experience or even no cycling experience. This of course means that you should take the results with a grain of salt before applying them to yourself. Of course, I'm assuming that if you're watching this, you're a highly trained cyclist, but the YouTube algorithm is sometimes mysterious. Maybe you're just taking a break from watching cat videos. That being said, the research that we currently have to go on seems to point in the direction that for longer efforts, crank length does not seem to affect power output once pedaling rate is accounted for. Standard crank lengths between 165 and 175 should not have any meaningful impact on performance. 
Now I personally think that this is a good thing because it means that you can pick the crank that will give you the best fit and not worry about whether or not you're losing watts. Those of you who are diehard fans of this channel may remember that I actually made a video on crank length a couple years ago in which I concluded that crank length doesn't really matter unless you really care about your sprint, in which case you may consider going a bit shorter. Some new research has come out since that video, and I included that research in this video, but it's not hard to see why I came to that conclusion. But I'm here to tell you I was wrong. I've actually changed my opinion on this, and I want to make the case to you that you should go with shorter cranks and that the industry standard for crank length should be shorter than it currently is. Hear me out. If we list out the advantages for using shorter cranks, say making 165 millimeters the standard for medium sized bikes and average sized riders, and then going up and down from there depending on your height, versus the current standard, which is 172.5 or 175 millimeter cranks, this is what we come up with. Shorter cranks may improve your sprint performance by a small amount. Even if it's not huge, sprints are often won and lost by tiny differences, so it may very well be worth it. Shorter cranks can allow you to get lower and more aero. Shorter cranks can reduce the likelihood of injury, and it is generally easier to overcome some obstacles in a bike fit with shorter cranks. All right, let's do longer cranks now. Um, yeah, I got nothing. If power output, efficiency, metabolic costs, etc. are in fact unaffected by crank length, then there is simply no advantage to having longer cranks on your bike over shorter ones. And in case you're wondering about disadvantages, it's just the inverse of the advantages list. Who would have thought? Okay, so if that is the case, Dylan, then why not go super short, down to 140s or 130s or something like that? Yeah, how long is it going to be before you're taking apart some poor six-year-old's huffy in pursuit of finally beating someone in a sprint. Well again, from the studies referenced earlier in this video, there does appear to be a point at which short cranks negatively affect even sprint performance, and it does seem like 160 to 165 millimeter cranks may be optimal for the average size person. If you are particularly short, then you may go shorter than that, and if you are particularly tall, then you may go longer than that. It seems from this research that 20% of your inseam would be a good number to shoot for. Is switching to shorter cranks going to revolutionize your sprint? No, it will not. I would put going to shorter cranks under the marginal gains category, but again, sprints are often won and lost by small margins. Look, if that's not worth you buying new cranks for all of your bikes, then I totally get it. But unlike most marginal gains, if you are already in the market for a new crank, or if you are a bike manufacturer deciding what crank lengths to put on your bikes, then this marginal gain has no added cost, so you might as well go with the shorter ones. Of course, that is just based on the limited research that we currently have. Who knows, maybe in another three years I'll make another video on this topic titled Long Cranks Are Back. Anything to get those views, am I right? Thanks for watching. If you are interested in shorter cranks, then it may be worth checking out Bicycle Bike Parts, which is a partner of this channel. For more information and promo offerings, check the link down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe and share it with your cycling friends. I'll see you in the next one.